हेलो एवरी वन हाउ आर यू ऑल वेलकम बैक टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल कर्नाटक आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग वेरी गुड राइट टुडे इज डे 19 ऑफ आर ऑन गोइंग सीरीज विच इज सिक्स और सिक्सटीन केसेज मैथमेटिक्स इन हंड्रेड डेज राइट एज यू नो वी आर डिस्कसिंग राइट नो वो चैप्टर कंटिन्यू एंड डिफेंसिबिलिटी टुडे इज द पार्ट सिक्स ऑफ द चैप्टर वट वी वट वी कैन डो इन द सेशन टुडे इज रिविजन ऑफ द इंटायर चैप्टर सो विल रिवाइज ऑल द मेजर टॉपिक्स विच इज देयर फ्रॉम द चैप्टर विल ट्राई टू रिकलेक्ट इट एंड सॉल्व सम क्वेश्चन ऑन इट reason why sir why we are doing this because again we're going to start in the coming sessions new chapters aod will come integrals will come so all of those chapters will have application of derivatives right so uh, for that reason i want to uh, i want you to have this concept with you okay so that's why the revision session is important it's not going to be a very long session a very small session with only recollection of all the important topics and your uh, questions on them as well okay i hope you are ready so get and get your pen and paper out and let's start with the session okay so make sure that you're ready keep the pen and paper with you if you want to have your notes keep the notes with you if you want to have the formulas with you keep the formulas with you because you know you might not remember all the formulas at a time right so and i might do it directly at times because i know the formulas i'll use it in the questions i'll give you reference but if you are having difficulty keep the notebooks keep the, your notes with you as well okay so first thing is continuity right The chapter's name is continuity indivisibility. So first thing is continuity. When can we call a function continuous? So what was it? Remember, I said whenever we have LHL and RHL equal. Obviously, for LHL and RHL to be equal, they must be what? They must be first existing in nature means LHL should exist, RHL should exist, and then they must be equal to what? The function's value at the same point. See, I am trying to find here what? Please check here. This represents my LHL. I also call it as L1. I call it as L1, and this represents my RHL. I call it as my L2. So both of them, they are equal and equal to what? Functions value at the same point. The point is A. See, x tends to A from negative. If I have a point A like this, tends from negative is my L1. Tends from right side is my L2. Means when I approach this point A, this value A on the number line from the left hand side. Is my L1 from the right hand side is my L2. When the value of those limits is coming equal to the function's value at the same point A, then I can call the function to be continuous at the point A. Correct? Continuous at the point x equals to A, and wherever it is true, wherever it is true, that point will be called as point of continuity for the given function. Point of continuity for the given function. Right? Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. So first question is based upon continuity only. Again, this question is not solved in our previous session, so I have taken a different question. So make sure that we are able to solve this. I think I have solved a similar question, but not the same question. We'll see. Okay. So what is saying? What's saying in the question? If f x is continuous at x equals to zero, they have already given us that function is continuous at x equals to zero. Okay. I think I have solved a similar question, but it's okay. We'll solve it again if I have solved the same one. So if f x is continuous at x equals to zero, where? f x is equal to two power x minus two power minus x upon sine x for all x non-zero value means why they are saying x non-zero value because whether you approach zero from left hand side will that value be equal to zero if I am finding let's say simply I am finding l one or I can also call it as l h l sir call it as l h l sir so if I am finding this value okay please understand this I will approach this zero from left hand side. But the condition is this x will not be equal to zero, right? Whether I'm approaching or not, whether I'm finding the limit or not, if I'm looking for approach, x tends to zero means what? X is not equal to zero. Same goes with RHL. So whether it is RHL or LHL, if I'm writing this x tends to zero from right hand side, what it means necessarily that x cannot be equal to zero. That's why they have written here. Whenever x is not equal to zero, I have to take this function's statement. What is it? 2 power x minus 2 power minus x upon sine x. Let's remove some extra part. Okay, let's proceed with the question. Okay, now find the f zero. So what we know, if the function is continuous, we know this that my l one will be equal to l two will be equal to f of zero. So if somehow I can find my any of the limit, if I can find my l one value, or if I can find the limit value, <coughs> if l one and l two are equal, what it means? Simply Limit exists. Limit exists, right? So if I can find the limit value of this expression and put it equal to f of zero, I'll get the value of f of zero. That's what they're asking. So let's check how will that look like. So I will write like this, bacha. Limit f x when when x tends to zero but not equal to zero. 
will be given by will be given by please check here limit x tends to 0 I can rewrite this as 2 power x minus 1 upon 2 power x upon sin x please check 1 2 power minus x 2 power minus x will be 1 upon 2 power x can I simplify it moving forward ok I have enough space so please check limit x tends to 0 please take the LCM here I get 2 power 2x minus 1 upon 2 power x sin x ok I will use some standard limits but I have to do some modifications for that let me write it again in the next step ok um, yeah so what I have so far limit x tends to 0 I have so far limit x tends to 0 I will write it separately 2x sorry not 2x 2 power 2x please check 2 power 2x is there bachcha. 2 power 2x minus 1 upon ok upon I will write something here but before this I will write here 2 power x and I will write here what sin x ok please check now same thing is written here 2 power x sin x 2 power 2x minus 1 ok now I will write here something called as just x just x and same thing I will write it over here ok can I do that yes sir if I multiply the same thing in numerator and denominator it will get cancelled the effect will not be you know uh, changing the expression itself so that is why it is allowed it is permissible so x and x is written on both numerator and denominator now club this together ok and these ok I will write 2x separately I will write 2x separately if you would like I can simply write this 2x over here forgive me this 2x over here, 2 power x over here so now if I apply limit to this part see this is a power x minus 1 upon x and this is sin x upon x right this is sin x upon x so this will become what remember this this will become 2 log 2 a log a right a log x the base is 2 so a power so 2 log 2 and what will this become bacha? this is for this part and for this will become simply 1 simply 1 please remember this sin x by x limit is 1 I can take this x over here right sin x by x will become 1 and this will become what bacha? 2 power 0 x tends to 0 right 2 power 0 so I, when I am applying limit x tends to 0 I can substitute it if the inter intermediate form uh, undeterminate form is gone I can substitute it what I am going to get please check this is what this is my limit value I do not have to write it ok so I am going to get this as what 2 log log a is simply 2 right a is 2 2 is 2 ok a power x right the expression is a power x so log 2 bring this 2 over here I will get log of 2 square this is simply 1 this also is 1 because 2 power 0 is 1 everything is 1 I get this as log 2 power 2 is 4 ok what is this value limit value is this it means what simply l1 or l2 will also be equal to this log of 4 and we know that this is equal to what f of 0 so from here we can say that why f of 0 because the function is given continuous so f of 0 equal to log 4 answer is answer is please check d log 4 ok continuous so l1 l2 equals to f of 0 f of 0 equal to log 4 f of 0 equal to log 4 ok can we move on to the next problem let us try ok now next concept is when can we call a function to be discontinuous means what are the conditions when I will have a con uh, function to be discontinuous how can we classify it what was it but if you remember if ok how can we call it so first reason is if the limit does not exist ok please see here either of this condition please see here if the limit what is this butcha? this is what my l1 what is this my l2 so if either l1 or l2 does not exist if the limit is not existing then how can be equal to f of the value ok so if let us say I am finding it at point x equals to a right so if the limit is not existing then how can I write this f a equals to l1 or l2 ok so if the limit does not exist either l1 or l2 or it both may not exist I cannot have the function to be continuous so one of the reason of discontinuity can be l1 and l2 not existing at the same time or either of them also is true both exists both limit exist but not equal to each other means l1 I can find a finite value for l1 I can also find finite value of l2 but they are not equal to 
each other as one and l2 both can be found but cannot be equal to each other if that is the case i can say again discontinuous i can say again discontinuous what limits are equal l1 exists and there is a finite value for l1 finite value for l2 also is there and they are equal to each other also but not equal to functions value at a so for a function to be continuous all the condition has to be true limits should exist limits should be equal to each other and should be equal to the function value at the same value a as well okay see so either of the cases missing the function will be discontinuous okay excuse me all right moving on i hope this is clear three reasons one reason is limit does not exist second reason limit exists but not equal third reason limit exists and equal but not equal to the function's value at a okay moving on moving on the problem on this you have to say for this function fx equals to defined like this at x equal to 0 whether it is discontinuous continuous of log of the function at x tends to 0 is e or none of these none of these okay so uh, please check here what is the meaning of this when x is 0 means what basically function's value at 0 is equals to 1 correct x is 0 means when i put x as 0 i get f of 0 as 1 so function's value at 0 equal to 1 for this expression or for this function to be continuous at x equal to 0 what should happen l1 and l2 should be equal to each other and should be equal to f of 0 okay so let me find l1 first what did i say for the function to be continuous okay l1 and l2 should exist should be equal and should be equal to 1 let me try let me try to find l1 how will i find l1 also called as lhl please check for this i will write like this as limit of fx when x tends to what butcha 0 from which side negative side 0 from negative side right how will this be written as please check for x not equal to 0 i will have this function okay so i will apply for lhl and rhl this function's expression okay so this will look like a uh, function's value will be written like this 0 minus h please understand this okay yeah so what i'm trying to say here is i have to replace fx by this correct no why sir why because i am writing from lhl side writing from lhl side so if i have to do that i have to write in the in the form of this how will it look like bacha? please check please check this will look like this limit of okay how much will be this uh x tends to zero x tends to zero e power i will replace x x by zero minus h so e power one upon zero minus h minus one upon e power one upon zero minus h minus plus one correct plus one please see this that's what is written here for limits okay now if you check this out how will this be looking like simplified it forward so limit x tends to or once i change it right i have changed the variable forgive me i've changed the variable here so this will be one second this will be h now this will be h now my mistake I have changed the variable to h now. So h will be simply 0, not 0 negative. Simply 0. Here also h tends to 0. Okay. Okay. Please see this. All right, sir. Because I changed x to h, right? I replaced x by x by 0 minus h. Please check here. x by 0 minus h. So h will become what 0 now, right? So if I do that, how will this look like? It will simply be e power minus 1 by h minus 1 upon e power minus 1 by h plus 1 is it visible e power minus 1 by h okay and minus 1 e power minus 1 by h plus 1 okay next slide let's look at the next slide so my limit is looking like this i'll write it again here s tends to 0 e power minus 1 by h minus 1 e power minus 1 by h plus 1 right if i put it right now it will not be defined okay it will not be defined please cross check okay but i can see if i have exponent e power anything, anything negative e power anything negative i can what rewrite using reciprocal formula like this please check i can rewrite like this limit of s tends to zero of this function 
कैन रिटर्न एज वन अपॉन ई पावर वन बाय एच और नॉट बच्चा ओके सेम वे आर फॉर डिनोमिनेटर ई पावर वन अपॉन वन बाय एच प्लस वन प्लीज चेक हियो प्लीज चेक हियो इफ आई हैव रिटर्न लाइक दिस ए पावर माइनस एक्स ए पावर माइनस एक्स आई कैन राइट दिस एज ए पावर वन अपॉन ए पावर एक्स और नॉट If I have it as a power minus x, I can write it as one upon a power x. Same way, if I have e power minus x, I can write it as one upon e power x. Same way, if I have e power minus one by x, I can write it as one upon e power one by x. Same thing I've done here. E power minus one by h was there. I wrote it as one upon e power one by h. This is not relevant. Let me erase this part. Let me erase this. Sir, quickly we'll do it. Okay. After this step, the question becomes very, very easy. Please check here. I'll get it as now substitute the values of zero. Okay. Now I can find the limit over here. I can write it as one upon e power one upon zero minus one one upon e power one by zero plus one. Okay. How will this be? E power zero will be what, bichcha? Please check here. This will be one upon. I'm finding what L one only, right? This is my L one, right? Everywhere is L one. So one upon what? One upon e power one by zero. E power one by zero is how much? E power infinity minus one. And please check here. Same way. One upon e power infinity plus one. How sir? Look at the functions graph. Exponential function graph goes like this. Okay, goes like this. So if now look at the functions graph. E power infinity means x is going to infinity, right? One by zero is infinity. We know that one by zero is infinity. One by zero is infinity. So I rewrote, I rewrote the one by zero part as infinity, infinity in both the cases. Now e bar infinity. When I am taking the graph x, exponential value, x as infinity. What is happening to the y value? Please check here. At x tends to infinity, when it goes very, very large, becomes very, very large on x side, the function's value is also becoming very large, which will be simply infinity. So I can rewrite this as one upon infinity minus one upon one upon infinity plus one. We know that. This will be zero minus one, zero plus one simply minus one by one, so minus one. So I got my L one as minus one. I got my L one as minus one. Let me erase the graph. Not relevant. Now once I explained you, so I got my L one as minus one. Now please check. Please check here. What was my function's value? F of zero was one, and L one was minus one. L one came as minus one. Is L one equal to f of zero? No, sir. We don't have to check for L two also, right? Because if L one is not equal to f of zero, then obviously the function is discontinuous. The function is discontinuous, sir. Option A. Because what is the continuity condition? L one and L two should be equal and should be equal to f of zero. Since L one is not equal to f of zero, the function is discontinuous. I hope this is simple and clear. Okay. Let's move on to the next problem. Okay. All right. Next is continuity in an interval. What we are doing today? Today's session, what we are doing is we are revising every concept. Okay, so whatever we have done in the session so far, so many sessions we have taken, we are revising them together in one session, having some recollections of previous things and do questions on them. If you are not able to follow this session, okay, if this is very fast for you. If this is okay, you are not able to relate to everything. Go back, see the respective sessions and clear your doubts. Okay, I have recorded all the sessions. All the sessions are there in the session in the playlist. Watch the videos. You know, understand the concept from there. This is just for revision purpose. This is just for revision purpose. I hope you understand. Okay, continuity in an interval. Okay, means we will check whether the function is continuous or not in an interval. Now understand this. What type of intervals we have, bacha? We have two type of interval. First one is closed interval. Second one is open interval. Okay, when it comes to open interval, a comma b, a comma b, no problem. It means what? A and b are not exclusive of the interval, right? Means a and b are not part of the solution. So, what should be the definition of continuity? Means every point lying between a and b, every point lying between a and b, the function should be continuous. That's all. For a function to be continuous in an open interval a b, every point between a b. For example, let's say I have three points between a b. I have x, y, and z. Okay, x, y, and z. Then the function should be continuous over here. A and b doesn't matter. A and b doesn't matter, bichcha. Means function should be continuous at point x, y, z. How we know the definition of continuity? L1 at x should be equal to L2 at x should be equal to function value at x. Same goes with y and same goes with z. So this should be true. The definition of the continuity should be true for all the points lying between. Please check. 
all the points lying between a and b open a and b open the functions or the continuity continuity def definition which is what l1 equal to l2 equals to f of the value of the function at that point should be equivalent should be applicable to all the points existing between a and b open interval now what about closed interval okay only thing which changes over here please check here only thing which changes over here is for a i don't have lhl for a lhl not possible why sir because anything on the left of a is not defined right is not part of the part of the domain anything on the left of a is not part of the domain okay and whenever we talk about continuity or differentiability we always talk about domain only only domain right so for a i don't have lhl existing and for b i don't have rhl existing okay please understand this for a there is no lhl for b there is no rhl in that case at point a we will check what at point a we will check what rhl please check here at point a we will not check lhl we will only check rhl and at point b we will not check rhl we will only check lhl please see here b minus is there b minus is there okay so at point b only lhl is checked at point a only rhl is checked i hope this is clear i hope this is clear sir and visible also okay great let's move on to the next okay let's move on to the next that's all was here how to define it for the open and close we both discussed for open doesn't matter any point lying between it the definition of the continuity should exist for all the points should be defined for all the points for the closed interval obviously open interval part will be there apart from open interval part what should happen at a or the left hand value lhd will not so lhl will not exist and for right hand value the right extreme value the rhl will not exist okay logical right logical now coming to the differentiability coming to the differentiability what is there sir fx is said to be differentiable or derivable derivable at x equals to c derivable at x equals to c only when this exists finitely okay understand this what is this which if you remember this is nothing but your first principle derivative derivative, derivative from the first principle this is a definition right from first principle of derivative correct correct sir so if this value is existing finitely means it has a value which can be written it's not infinite it's not undefined as a having a finite value only in that case i can say the function fx is differentiable at the point c what is this given as f of x okay okay same mistake this is f of c f of x minus f of c upon x minus c f of x minus f of c upon x minus c exist finitely exist finitely okay when that happens when limit tends to x tends to c okay when that happens i can say the function is differentiable okay but but is it is it all no how will we will say how will we find this value so we have to find something called as lhd and rhd remember lhd and rhd what is it sir left hand derivative and right hand derivative sir left hand derivative and right hand derivative sir so for the left hand derivative if you remember what was it bachcha what was it i wish to find for c plus okay means i will apply it like this right f of x plus a minus f of a upon simply x plus a minus x right right okay in this case i have taken okay okay sir where limit tends to x tends to 0 this is not a same mistake x okay x all right x tends to a i can say okay so uh, this is the condition this is my rhd condition this is my rhd condition okay rhd condition correct for lhd what we do bachcha simply we do it like this This will be what x minus a minus x. So basically, what we are doing here is this will cancel, right? Correct. R H L H D will be like this. So this is my this is my R H D actually. I wrote it ulta. Please forgive me. I wrote it ulta. This is my R H D. This is my L H D. Okay. This is my R H D. This is my L H D. 
what is it right hand derivative and left hand derivative right hand derivative and left hand derivative sir okay so this limit should exist and they should be equal to each other they should be equal to what is the condition for differentiability lhd should be equal to rhd sir rhd sir correct correct let's move on let's see problem number three okay okay problem number three they're saying that there's a function given like this fx is equal to x square plus 2x where x is less than or equal to 0 so obviously whenever we are talking we're going to talk about lhd or uh, when we talk about lhl we'll talk about this function correct because less than means from this side we have to approach from the left hand side so we'll talk about this whenever we talk about rhl or rhd we'll talk about ax plus b okay let's see what the question says then value of a and b such that fx is continuous okay they have given the question they have given that fx is continuous and differentiable at x equals to 0 means it's stated it's continuous and differentiable hai dono hai okay then with this given condition find it out find out the values of a and b find out the values of a and b let's do let's do it sir so we'll just apply first we'll apply first what continuity will apply how can we say a function is continuous l1 equals to l2 equals to f of a so let's find l1 sir let's find l1 or lhl how this look at bacha from here i will apply so it will be limit x tends to okay yeah zero i'll replace x by what zero minus h the whole square plus two times of zero minus h okay equals to okay okay this is equal to this is my lhl okay so this is equal to how much please check this is simply zero right h is zero so this is zero this is also zero okay so basically it's going to come as h square plus 2h sorry minus 2h and how much this will be zero only please understand this one second give me just one second this is minus 2h simply zero simply zero sir okay all right lhl is coming as zero what about rhl sir what about rhl sir for rhl what we will do same thing but with plus sign okay but for this expression right i told you greater than zero is there so i have to use the second one okay use the second one if i do that i'll get it as a times of zero plus h zero plus h plus b for this part where limit is applied h tends to zero h tends to zero sir h tends to zero sir if i do that what i'm gonna get please check so my rhl would be what if i apply this i'll be having a h plus b limit h tends to zero if i do that what i'm gonna get a times zero will be zero so simply b and since the function is continuous since it is continuous means what happens lhl should be equal to what bacha rhl okay what is my lhl coming as zero so zero should be equal to what rhl b rhl is b so my value of b is defined as or i have got value of b as zero please check so i have two options as such a and b we'll check which of which of the option is correct by finding the value of a so i have applied continuity once and i got value of b as zero what next i have to apply differentiability i have to apply differentiability how will i say a function is differentiable i have to find lhd and rhd find the lhd and rhd sir okay please check the function is what x square plus 2x let's do for lhd first so for lhd i said we'll have to apply this only so we have to for R, for lhd and rhd to for, for, to make it differentiable what you have to do lhd and rhd should be equal right for lhd what we're going to use we're going to use this part we're going to use this part sir right lhd x square plus 2x will use let's write for lhd first so lhd we will write like this correct please check here so expression will look like this limit f of 0 minus h minus f of 0 okay upon minus h minus h where h tends to 0 correct correct sir how much is that x square plus 2x x square plus 2x how much much will be so it will be like simply this so x square plus 2x is there okay so apply this so i'll get it here this will be simply 0 f of 0 is 0 right 
he put x square plus 2x 0 square plus 2 times of 0 is 0 so this is 0 okay but what about this part limit this will be 0 minus h the whole square plus 2 times of 0 minus h 0 minus h okay what about this minus 0 minus 0 okay Okay, let me raise some extra part, bacha. This is not required. I just wanted to show you how it is zero. F of zero is zero, so this I have written here as simply zero. Simplify this, please. How much I'm going to get? I'm going to get this as h square minus two h upon minus h. H square minus two h upon minus h. Please cancel. Minus h will this will cancel with this, and this will become minus. This will become plus. H will cancel. I'll have this as two minus h. Two minus h. Okay. Put this value 0, h of 0 here will become what? 2, simply 2. So, what is my LHD? My LHD is coming as 2, sir. Okay, 2, sir. What about my RHD? I'll do it here only RHD. My right hand derivative will be like this, bacha. please check here. So, I mean, I'll write this here as limit h tends to 0. This will be simply what? f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 upon what? Positive of h, positive of h, right? positive of h so what is my function now function is going to be ax plus b function is going to be ax plus b please check here if i do ax plus b so i'll replace x by 0 plus h it'll become what a times of 0 plus h plus b how much is this minus 0 okay minus 0 upon simply h please check here simply h how much is this coming b is 0 right we got b as 0 previous question step b is coming as 0 so i can use it here so b is also 0, 0 minus 0 is simply 0. So if I have to write rsd over here, please check here, rsd. This will be what? a times of 0 plus h. So a times of 0 plus h is ah. Okay. b is 0, 0 minus 0. So simply 0. Okay. And h will be as it is. So h. Please check here what I am getting. ah by h, h, h will cancel. I get my rhd as a. Okay. Now they have said in the question, the function is differentiable at x equals to 0. The function is differentiable at x equals to 0. It means LHD and RHD should be equal. What is my LHD? LHD value was 2. Please check here. LHD value was 2. Here I have written it as well. So 2 equals to A. So from here I got A as 2 and previously I got B as 0. Any option like this? A as 2, B is 0. Option B, right? Option B is correct, but a is 2, B is 0. Let's move on to the next part. Okay. I hope this is visible and clear. Okay. Uh, this is H. Okay. This is H. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Moving on. Now, relation between continuity and differentiality means how can we relate with both of them? What type of statement we can write for a function? Let's say I have a, a function given as y equal to fx. Okay. And we are talking about a point x equals to a okay at a point x equals to a okay for this function what happens is if i have the function fx is function fx is differentiable differentiable then it will be continuous also so both will be true bacha. if the function fx at x equals to a is differentiable it will be continuous also okay we also have the condition when the function is let's say not continuous at not continuous at x equals to a then simply it will not be differentiable also please understand this if differentiable continuity is okay automatically if not continuous then automatically it is not differentiable what about next case if the function is let's say continuous continuous is there but we can't talk about this continue like durability we don't know whether it is differentiable or not so may or may not so the function may be differentiable or may not be differentiable both condition can be true so for for c differentiable for c uh, for a function to be continuous it can be differentiable it cannot be means both conditions should exist whether it is differentiable or not that also is true differentiable is also true may not be differentiable both condition can be existing based upon the question we have to how we can we check the differentiability we have to check what lhd equals to rhd we have to check for lhd equals to rhd right sir yes sir okay all right moving on now same like the continuity in the interval we have to refine what differentiable in the interval okay so as i said for open interval no problem for open interval check here 
for the open interval is written here right for the open interval at every point in the interval this the statement of lhd and rhd should be validated lhd equals to rhd is my condition for what bachcha is my condition for the function to be differentiable right so for every point between a and b this should be true this should be true what what about my closed interval what about my closed interval please check here for closed interval ab what should happen bachcha for ab closed interval at point a can i have lhd no sir there is no nothing before a, a which is part of the domain so at point a only rhd will exist please check here at point a only rhd will exist and at point b only lhd will exist see here negative see here positive so at point b there is no rhd there is no value after b in the domain so at point b only lhd at point a only rhd i hope this is clear right yes sir i just explained it in the case of continuity the principle remains same okay now i'll recall some formulas that we have used that we have used that we're going to use in the session today as well uh, for differentiation so starting from the simplest one okay let me rewrite it all the formulas that we know of so first one y equals to y equal to let's say a x power n what's the differentiation of this what's the y dash bachcha y dash is going to be a n x power n minus 1 right what about y equal to sin x how much is this y dash will be simply cos x what is y dash first derivative right y equal to cos x will be what bachcha y dash simply will be minus sin x this is equal to sin that's equal to sin okay what about next y equal to if i have tan x simply y dash will be what bachcha plus secant square x y equal to secant x is there how much is that y dash y dash is secant x tan x secant x tan x same way if i have to write for what let's say cosecant x i have to write for cosecant x okay it will be what minus cosecant x cot cot x check here y equals to cosec x is there then y dash will be given by this is equal to sign again minus cosec x cot x minus cosec x cot x what about cot what about y equal to cot x for cot x will be what bachcha for cot x will be minus cosec square b minus cosec square x i hope you understand this i hope this is visible right this is visible this is multiplication sign over here over here also multiplication sign okay both are multiplied cosec x into cot x okay these are the few uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 we also have i'll write some of the tan uh, like you know inverse functions as well so if i have let's say y equal to sin inverse of x what is this going to be derivative 1 upon root of 1 minus x square and in the case of cos inverse in the case of cos inverse this will be simply added with a minus sign in the numerator okay i have remember this for cos inverse x will be simply minus 1 by the same thing what about next one tan inverse remember this y dash will be 1 upon 1 plus x square and for cot inverse will be just negative if i write here for cot inverse it will be simply coming with a negative sign over here okay negative sign over here what about the last one which is y equal to let's say sec inverse then i'll have y dash i'll have y dash as 1 upon mod x times of x square minus 1 and again goes with cosec inverse also this the minus sign will come in the numerator okay i hope this is clear some special functions remember this y equal to log x simply y dash is 1 by x and y equal to uh, e power x please check this e power x okay so bachcha e power x only this is going to be my derivative so i have some taking some formula 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and three more so 15 okay these are more over you know everything that you need to solve any question okay if something special is there not required in this case so will be dealing with it you know individually for example we also have some general theorems if you remember we also have some special things which is called as theorems or rules or rules what was it if you remember what are the rules 
फर्स्ट वन वॉज बच्चा फर्स्ट वन वॉज प्रोडक्ट रूल सर प्रोडक्ट रूल रिमेंबर दिस प्रोडक्ट रूल हाउ वॉज दिस इफ आई हैव लेसर टू नंबर रिटर्न लाइक दिस एक्स एंड वाई एक्स एंड वाई ओके आई लेट टेक अनदर फॉर्म आई टेक इट एज एफ ऑफ एक्स टाइम्स जी ऑफ एक्स ओके then what's the product rule going to say to us or give to us It's simply going to be f dash of x first g dx gx as it is plus keep fx as it is and g dash of x right same way goes to the second one second one was what bachcha it was quotient rule quotient rule when i have this as fx upon gx fx upon gx what is the definition what was the differentiation of this Please check f x derivative kept with g x as it is minus f x as it is kept with g x derivative upon g x the whole square g x the whole square right so this was it quotient rule and chain rule was also there chain rule remember this chain rule okay I'll take this with example if I have let's say log of sine Two t log of sine two t. How will I solve this, sir? First, I will solve for log, sir. First, I will solve for first function. How many functions are there? Logarithmic, trigonometric, and a polynomial function. So, logarithmic will be one by. I have y dash as. I'll have y dash as. Please check your y dash as one by sine two t. Okay. Then comes for sine. I'll have it as cos two t cos two t times what? Two times what? Two. For sine it is cos for two t it is two. What is my final answer? Two sine cos by sine is two cot two t. Okay, this is my y dash. Okay, so I apply the chain here. Apply the chain in the differentiation. It's called as chain rule. Okay, sir. Okay. Now, so I think we have revised all the concepts. If something is missing, I don't think so. Okay. So we have some concepts here. Again, questions here. Y equals to tan inverse of x plus one upon x minus one plus tan inverse of x minus one upon x plus one. Find dy by dx. Find dy by dx. Okay. But before going to that, let's solve something here. Let's simplify something here. What I'm, I'm going to get? So if you remove this formula, I can write here this as a and this as b. Tan inverse of a plus b is how much? It's simply. Please check here. Tan inverse of a plus tan inverse of b is nothing but tan inverse of a plus b upon 1 minus ab correct a plus b upon 1 minus ab right so let me just i write the uh, numerator as it is so simply in this case i can write here y equals to tan inverse of right here x plus 1 upon x minus 1 plus x minus 1 upon x plus 1 Okay, divided by one minus multiply this please. Please check here. Please check here. Cancels out. This and this, this and this cancels out. What is what is going to be here left? Simply one. So one minus one will be what? Please check. Tan inverse of one by zero. Simply. Tan inverse of infinity simply pi by two. So what I got y equals to pi by two. What they are looking for? D by by dx. What they are looking for? D by by dx. So simply D by by dx will be what? Bacha zero, na? Why zero, sir? Pi by two is a constant. Definition of a constant is zero. Option option number option number C is correct, bacha. Option C is correct. Option C is correct. Option C is my right answer. Okay. Let me. Not write it here, okay? Okay, sir. I think this is clear. I think this is clear. Let's move on to the next problem. If we are having fifth question, okay? Fifth question. Y equal to this expression. Find d by dx. Okay? Let's simplify this first. Can we simplify it, sir? Again, what we're going to use? We'll use all the theorems. I think if we use first, uh, we'll use only uh, what do you call product rule? We'll use first. We'll see whether we can use the. Uh, Uh, product rule. Sorry, first we'll use the chain rule. We'll see whether we can use the product rule or not. Okay. So let's see the question. What will this transform into? If I rewrite this, 
So I can write this y as 1 by cot is there, right? This something, some angle is there, no theta only, some angle. So y by 1 by cot will be simply tan. So tan of the same angle. So a tan, a tan x plus b cot x, right? a tan x plus b cot x. They asking us to find what? Derivative of this. Okay. Can you do it? Okay. So tan of this will be what, bacha? Let's check here. Sec square. Tan differentiation is sec square. Same thing will come. A tan x plus b cot x. And what about this inside? We are going to go into chain rule now. A will remain as it is. For tan x, I will have sec square x then I'll move to the plus sign right as it is b I'll write as it is for cot I will have what minus cosec square x okay can we simplify it over here only please check any option coming like this sec square of a tan x b cot x a tan x b cot x and a sec square plus minus is minus option a is correct answer no please check please check sec square secant square Second square a tan x plus b cot x a tan x plus b cot x a sec square x minus plus minus is minus b cosec square x option a is correct sir option a is correct sir right let's move on to the next problem okay okay all right so over here in question number six let's look at question number six now what it says bacha find dy by dx for the given function y equals to tan inverse of 7x upon 1 minus 12x square yes sir how will this be? How will this be, sir? Please check. So, uh, I can see one thing over here. If you like, 4x plus 3x is 7x and 4x times 3x is what? 12x square. 4x plus, 7x, 4x plus 3x is 7x and 4x times 3x is 12x square, right? Okay. So, uh, we just learned the formula in the previous slide. Tan inverse of A plus tan inverse of B is equals to what? tan inverse of a plus b upon 1 minus a b upon 1 minus a b. So, in the previous set, we used this part and we got this as result. In this question, we can use this part and get the previous one as a result. You will see how. Please check. Please check over here. I can write this as y equal to tan inverse of, I will rewrite this statement in the bracket, 4x plus 3x upon this as 1 minus 4x times 3x. Please compare now. Please compare this and this. Compare this and this. I will have a as 4x, b as 3x. So I can write this as y equals to tan inverse of 4x plus tan inverse of 3x. Am I right? Yes. The same formula is being utilized here, picture. Okay. All right. Now what now? I have to find the differentiation. Let's look at the next slide. So, what I've got so far is y equals to this plus tan inverse of 3x, correct? I have to apply what? Differentiation with respect to what variable? x. How will this look, bachcha? Tan inverse differentiation is 1 upon x square. Here, the entire x is 4x, so 1 upon 4x the whole square. And the differentiation of 4x I have to do again. Check here. First function is ITF. Second is polynomial. So for 4x, what is the differentiation? Simply 4. Simply 4. Am I right? Next one, picture. please check here. I will get again 1 upon 3x the whole square times 3. Times 3. Yes. How much is this? Please check. 4 upon 1 plus 16x square. 4 is 16. X is just x square. Over here, 3 upon. This 3 is there, no? 3 upon 1 plus 9x square. I think this is your answer. Please cross check any of the options is coming like this. Please cross check. So, I think option A only is correct. 4 upon 1 up plus 16x square and uh, plus 3 upon 1 plus 9x square. Okay. So, option A is my correct answer. I hope this is very simple. Okay. Very simple problem. Let's move on to the next set of question. Seventh one. Okay. So, all right. I have to use here product rule and chain rule together. Please see e power sin x is multiplied with sin e power x. Again, first function in this part is what? Exponential. Next is what? Trigonometric. Yes, sir. Over here, trigonometric and exponential. So, I will have to use product rule and chain rule together, right? First product rule, then chain rule for both the terms, okay? Let's see how will this plan out. 
again they are asked uh, asking us to do what find dy by dx okay so we can solve it over here only please check i can write dy by dx directly if i am writing equals to first let me uh, keep e sin x as it is e power sin x as it is i'm not doing anything to that i'm differentiating this part d by dx of sin of e power x simple enough right product rule first kept first term as it is second term i've taken here then plus sin i'll i'll keep the sin e power x now as it is sin e power x as it is and then differentiate what bachcha differentiate e power sin x e power sin x okay okay keep this as it is e power sin x this will be what bachcha cos of e power x right sin differentiation is cos again chain rule will be applied chain rule will make e power x as e power x only no change right exponential functions remains as it is sin e power x will remain as it is because there is no differentiation over here okay what about next term this will again be as it is and i'll do for sin again right i'll do for sin again chain rule so we will be getting cos x anything common please check anything common i'll have e power sin x common on both side so i will let me just take that what's left hand side cos e power x e x so i can write it as e power x cos e power x okay next what sin okay cos e x or simply cos x sin e power x please check your options please check your options here e power sin x any okay so first three is there e x cos e x e x cos e x okay plus cos x sin e x okay so please check here c option e power sin x e x cos e x plus cos x sin e power x option number c is my correct answer right bachcha okay so this is also a very simple question looking at it since there is lot of functions makes us you know at times confused but what we know that only we can do right can you do something that you have not learnt so whatever you have learnt that only you can apply so for that reason what we have learnt we have learnt the differentiation for different different functions we have learnt the some general theorems first obviously looking at this i can say product rule comes first what comes first product rule comes first and next comes what chain rule next comes what chain rule so first i use product rule to get the two different parts with the plus sign and then comes the chain rule for every function that i'm differentiating i hope this is clear let's move on to the next problem okay last problem of the day okay but very good question i like this one okay let's see so what they have given is this is again a implicit function means i cannot represent just y simply in the form of x okay i have e power x plus e power y e power x plus y what is the meaning of it means i do not have y as a subject given in the problem okay but they are asking us what bachcha they are asking us to find d by by dx d by by dx for the reason and at what value so they are asking us basically to find d by by dx but not the expression they are asking us to find the value of the differential differential okay they are asking to find the value of derivative okay so at what value when x is equals to 2 and y is equal to 2 okay so once i find the dy by dx it will be in which which variable x and y only correct x and y only so in that expression i'll i'll remove uh, i'll rewrite the x and y in terms of 2 comma 2 and let's see we'll get one of the these results okay let's see here so i'll do what i'll differentiate the entire equation this equation please look at here e power x plus e power y equals to e power x plus y i'll differentiate everything from lhs and rhs side okay let's see so if i apply the derivative to this side okay so e power x will remain as it is no correct e power x will remain as it is right what about next term bachcha so e power y also remain as it is sir okay very good is it over no sir somebody will say sir dy by dx will come sir now few students my ask sir why remember this chain rule will apply right for e power y i'll do differentiation of e power y i'll get e power y correct but i will also to do for what what why no and for y the differentiation what is the differentiation it is dy by dx then sir why didn't you do it for e power x i did bachcha when i am differentiating e power x what i'm going to get please check e power x i will get and then i'll get differentiation of what differentiation of chain rule x 
how much is this part please tell me 1 only no so e power x times of 1 how much is that simply e power x so i did all of that okay whenever i have only one variable x no i don't have to differentiate and show it to you that's why i skipped that part but it is automatically included in that answer okay so i hope you understood this part let me erase this extra information okay chaliye let's quickly complete our problem yes okay this is done lhs is done now let's move on to rhs sir okay how will this look like bachcha so I'll differentiate first e power x, how much I'll get? I'll get e power x plus y only. This will remain as it is. Next, I will move in the bracket. After uh, differentiating what? The exponential function, I'm moving to the polynomial function. I have a plus sign. So I'll do for simply x, x will be what? 1, x will be 1. What about y? So this we know, na? dy by dx. Correct, sir. Correct, sir. What about this? Please check. So do one thing. Keep dy by dx on one side because we are asked to find what value of dy by dx. So I'll bring this over here e power x minus e power x plus y. I hope you are comfortable with it. What I wrote here multiply this term bacha, with 1. What are you gonna get e power x plus y? No, that I have brought here. That I have brought here. Okay, simple enough. Simple enough. Yes, sir, very simple. And what about this thing? What is left over this side? e power x plus y times what dy by dx and this thing is going there this whole thing is moving to the side so becomes what minus e power y what is the next step everybody know take the dy by dx common correct e power x plus y minus e power y this is as it is Please check. Okay. Next, I'll take the next slide and write what I'm going to do. No, I'm going to bring this term which is multiplied over here on this side. So where will it come, bacha? It'll come in the uh, the denominator. It'll come as division. So e power x minus e power x plus y divided by e power x plus y minus e power y. Please check. Okay, e power x minus e power x plus y, e power x plus y minus e power y. Correct? This is equals to d by by dx. Sir, question done. No. They have asked us to find the value of this expression when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2. Okay, so I will rewrite this as d by by dx when at 2 comma 2 will be given by, will be given by e power 2 minus e power 2 plus 2 upon e power 2 plus 2 minus e power 2 because x is also 2 y is also 2 what i'm gonna get bacha? e power 2 minus e power 4 e power 4 minus e power 2 i can cancel these two expressions with the minus 1 if they were same with the signs i can cancel with 1 but this is you can see here this is plus in the denominator this is negative this e power 2 is, I let me change the color of, of this line. So e power 2 is what, bacha? negative here becomes positive. So I can cancel with minus 1. So what I'm going to get, I'm going to get my answer as, okay, my differentiation value at x equals to 2 comma y equal to 2 is nothing but minus 1, nothing but minus 1. Please check the answer over here. Any option is correct like this? Any option is correct like this, minus 1, option C. Option C is correct, bacha. option C is correct. I hope this is this was helpful, right? So we have completed the revision also. I have taken the important topics. Okay, um, why did I do the revision? I already informed because we are completing the, you know, we are starting the calculus unit. Everything will come, applications of all of these values, these features will come in those chapters, okay? So you have to be very much confident and answerable to any questions coming in those topics okay and for that you need this chapters foundation so i wanted to revise because chapter was longer okay so i wanted to come with a short revision where i can recollect all those things and basic idea is i wanted to solve some more questions see apart from the other sessions i've taken eight more questions to solve in this chapter in the session okay so i hope this was helpful i was easy as well so with this i would like to conclude the session keep working hard keep smiling see you in the next session take care bye bye